It's very difficult to know what's happening on the ground in Mariupol, but there hasn't really been a lot of information that has been verified coming out of the city. From what I gather, it seems like probably most of the city is under Russia control, but there are still Ukrainian forces holding out. Strategically, how important is Mariupol? And if Russia indeed has taken over, can it hold on to it? That's the key question, isn't it? It's a super strategically important city. The reason for that is because it is one of the key ports that Ukraine has, and the vast majority of Ukrainian exports go through that port, through to the Sea of Azov. So it's really key to ensure that Ukraine's economy is able to operate in the long term. It's also key to ensure that Ukraine is both able to keep supplies itself and also to supply other countries. Uh, in terms of whether the Russians can keep the city if they do, in fact, manage to take it, look, what we found in the past is when in 2014 Russia invaded Ukraine the first time, it wasn't able to hold Mariupol. It is a city that has effectively been razed almost to the ground at this point. So it is a different scenario to the one we saw in 2014. But certainly the Ukrainians will be very focused on trying to take that city back if they do lose it because so much of their trade depends on that port. And Zoya, there have been multiple explosions reported in Lviv in the west. The situation there has changed really rapidly there. The Russians have been targeting this morning and overnight Lviv, which is indeed, as you say, it's a city on the west of Ukraine. It's a city that has, for, for, for the most part, escaped a lot of the heavy hits that other cities in the east and in the south have faced. So it is something that is quite worrying. And it's a city that's very close to the Polish border. So it's also going to be worrying for, uh, for Poland, which will be watching these hits very, very closely. And there is, of course, the danger that if a Russian target is missed, if a Russian rocket goes into Poland, well, that's a NATO country and that is a whole different level of warfare. Meanwhile, what's the situation in the capital, Kyiv, and surrounding areas? There's also been, a, uh, there have been alarms overnight in Kiev. There have been missile strikes directed at Kiev as well. Uh, but Kiev is holding and has managed to, to hold since the Ukrainian forces were able to retake those cities on the outskirts of Kiev, some of the horrible scenes that we've seen out of Bucha and out of some of the other cities on the outskirts, um, the Ukrainians have been able to take those back. So since they've been able to take those back, since the Russians retreated, Kiev has been much less of a target for the Russian attacks. And tell us a bit more about what's been happening in Kharkiv and other areas to the east of Ukraine. What has Russia's strategy been there? It's been really difficult in those areas. The Russian forces have been attacking Kharkiv and we've seen uh, casualty figures coming out over the past few days where we've had Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, say that 18 people have been killed and about 100 or at least 100 have been injured in just the past few days. So they've been sustaining a really significant assault in those cities. And the irony of the situation is that Russian President Vladimir Putin said that he wanted to go to Ukraine in order to save the Russian-speaking population. And here he is with his forces attacking and killing people in those predominantly Russian-speaking areas of Kharkiv and, and surrounds. So it is quite a, a horrible scene on the ground in that city, which has sustained significant attacks over the past few days. Meanwhile, the sinking of Russia's Moskva vessel had even pro-Kremlin commentators questioning Moscow's version of what happened to it. Indeed. So this has been really quite significant, something that I've noticed on social media and on Russian media, which I watch, uh, has been a shift in some of the rhetoric from those key Kremlin propagandists, those key voices who are boosting Vladimir Putin's war on Ukraine. Um, some of, uh, one of the most uh, famous ones um, has actually come out last night and said, look, this is, this is horrific. How could we let this happen? Russia can't possibly have lost this flagship carrier, this key Soviet era warship um, two missile strikes, because where were we looking? Why didn't the radar pick up these missile strikes? And that's actually an acknowledgement of the fact that it was indeed the Ukrainians effectively who took out that warship, which is something the Russians haven't really acknowledged until now. They've been pushing this line that, oh, there was a fire and it sank. 
but this was a pretty good signal that actually the Russians are starting to shift a little bit in terms of that messaging, or at least their propaganda arm is starting to shift on that messaging. Well, the Ukrainian president's already announcing a big rebuilding program and trying to encourage Ukrainians to return home already. He is, and that's a really key element for Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president. He announced over the weekend a massive housing program saying that anyone who has lost their home in these Russian attacks, anyone who hasn't got a home of their own, who doesn't own their own home, who works for the civil service or who is a member of the armed forces, will get housing provided or will, will ensure that they will be housed in their own homes after the war is over. And that's a really key promise that he made in an attempt to keep some of those top people in Ukraine. Because, of course, in the wake of this Russian invasion, millions of Ukrainians, some of the best Ukrainians from the perspective of their prospects, their economic prospects, their education, um, those who were able to leave have left. More than 4 million people have left. And what Zelensky is trying to do is to get those people to return to Ukraine so that the economy is able to hold up in the longer term. Because the worry for Zelensky is that if these young people of working age leave and stay away, stay in the EU and in other countries, then those people will not be working to rebuild Ukraine. And in fact, that's something that the Russian president has found. There's been a huge brain drain happening in Russia where some of the young and most economically viable people have been leaving Russia in a flood. So it is quite interesting that it is something that Zelensky is really trying to head off. Is it too soon, though, for them to return? How are civilians managing to start rebuilding their lives when the war continues indefinitely in their country? That's a good question, but what you see on social media, what I've seen in videos, is generally a really significant stream of people returning to some areas of Ukraine. No one, of course, is returning to those east and under fire southern parts of Ukraine, like Mariupol, not that they could get in even if they wanted to. But people are starting to return to the Ukrainian capital, to Kiev, uh, to rebuild their lives, to see what sort of destruction the Russian forces have wreaked. Um, some of our reporters on the ground in, in Ukraine have been reporting some terrible scenes in, in apartment buildings and in houses where soldiers have just destroyed uh, people's things, destroyed their homes. But the Ukrainians are coming back and they're wanting to rebuild. They want to make a life for themselves there. And I've been speaking with some people on the ground, some Ukrainians who've returned, who've said to me, look, what am I in Poland? I'm just a refugee. I don't have a work. It's very difficult for me to really make something of myself. And Ukraine is my home. That's where my friends are. That's where my things are. That's where my family is. And they're actually feeling quite patriotic about that return. So I've spoken with quite a few people who've made their way back. So initially they, they fled. Ukraine to Poland or to other neighbouring countries and now they're on their way back to Ukraine. Zoya Shefterlovich, thank you. Thank you very much for having me.